it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be with you as always. I am sitting here with Justin Macedo, and Justin is from Uncle Sam's Safari Outfitters. And before I get into introducing him to you guys, I wanted to say one thing to you. You know, we do on this podcast, we cover the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life here in the Ozarks. And one of the things, one of the subjects that comes up a lot is, of course, business and then also entrepreneurship. We have the Sam Walton College of Business. They have an amazing um, entrepreneurship program. We've got the Innovation Studio. We've got so much happening. Uh, Startup Junkie. There's so many different organizations um, from Bentonville, from Bella Vista on down to Fayetteville that serve the needs of wannabe entrepreneurs as well as actual entrepreneurs. And so I thought it would be interesting to have Justin on the podcast today to talk about his journey. But but before we do that, I I just want to share with you a couple of pieces of information. And and it's, you know, it's um, you know, it's just important to think about. But we're going to discuss the benefits of buying an existing business versus starting one from scratch. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs dream of starting their own business, but there are also many benefits to buying an existing one. For one, an existing business will already have customers and revenue streams in place, providing a steady source of income from day one. Additionally, a business that has been operating for a while will have a history of financial performance, which can be used to predict future performance and make informed decisions. And then another benefit of buying an existing business is that it will likely have established relationships with suppliers, customers, and other key stakeholders. These relationships can be leveraged to the advantage of the new owner, and an existing business will likely have an established brand, which can be leveraged to attract new customers. Furthermore, an existing business will likely have employees who are already trained and experienced in the business operation, which can save time and money for the new owner. And perhaps one of the most attractive benefits for potential buyers is that it is generally easier to access financing for the purchase of an existing business than for a startup. So if you're considering starting your own business, don't overlook the benefits of buying an existing one. This week's episode, if it doesn't convince you to consider or even remotely think about buying a new business, maybe the statistic will help you. 60% of all small business owners in the United States are 40 years of age or older. And there's a huge percentage of that 60% that are over the age of 60. So there are all kinds of business opportunities out there. You just have to look closely to find them. And I think today's story will help cement this idea in your head and maybe give you something to think about as you move forward with your dreams of becoming an entrepreneur. So it's not always about the startup. Sometimes you can get into an existing business and, you know, take it to the house, as they say. So, Justin, how are you doing? I'm great. Good. I know that was a long introduction. Yeah. There, so, but does a lot of that make sense to you? Or was that what you were thinking about when you started out? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, the idea of buying a business was not like super on the radar. Like I knew that people did it, but until I was kind of in some of my senior level classes at the university, I didn't realize that like, Oh, it happens pretty frequently. <laughs> it happens very frequently. Yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, again, it, the benefit is you don't have to start from scratch. Yeah. Right. I mean, you already have books, you have a track record, hopefully, mm-hmm. and then you can kind of use that and extrapolate out and see, well, you know, maybe I could bring some new vision and new opportunities to this. And so yeah. why don't you tell our audience here at I Am Northwest Arkansas just a little bit about who Justin is. Give us your superhero origin story before we get into the acquisition of Uncle Sam's Safari Outfitters. Yeah. Yeah. So I was born in Fort Worth, um, Texas. And, you know, I lived there until I was 15. Uh, My dad got a job with the city of Fayetteville and we moved up here in between my freshman year and sophomore year of high school. Went to Farmington High School, was there for three years, graduated from Farmington and knew that I wanted to go to the U of A. Even whenever I was in Texas, I wanted to go to the U of A because my dad went here. My grandmother went here. So yeah, so you have a legacy there. thing yeah. going on. Yeah, we got okay. a legacy. Cool, yeah. cool. So 
I went to the U of A and thought I wanted to be a dentist. I um, realized that chemistry was not for me, um, <laughs> although I realized that three semesters in. And then, yeah, just fell in love up here. The day after I graduated high school, I started working at Uncle Sam's. And so I've worked there for almost five years now. Wow. But yeah. So talk about knowing the business. I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could have probably run that. You were probably running the place when the owner wasn't around, maybe. Yeah. Or yeah. We were doing, doing I was so during COVID, we had some people leave and that kind of opened up a role for me to step in and like learn how to do some ordering stuff. And yeah, just kind of get a, a real handle on the business. Um, so that was I was really blessed by that. And they let me they let me leave during the summers um, to go do stuff that I was really passionate about. I love guiding. And that's what I've done. For the past four summers, um, I was a fly fishing guide in Alaska after my freshman year of college. And then I guided for a place called Way Forward Adventures for the past three years in different capacities. But that was backpacking guiding out in southwestern Colorado. But yeah, they let me do that. And yeah, I once I transferred out of or changed from a biology major to a business major, stuff started making sense. And yeah. I really fell in love with the idea of businesses and small businesses. So I uh, got my degree in small business management and entrepreneurship. Okay. Got a minor in geography because I like looking at maps. Right. Really. That was the, the main thing. <laughs> That's so, fine. That's yeah. fine. So what was it, what stood out for you at the Walton College of Business in terms of preparation that helped you to realize that, you know what, I, I can actually go out and start my own business and or or go buy a business? Yeah, I think... So I think really the preparation, especially with the, like they, I guess it was my junior year, they started really opening up the, the SEVI track and all of that. And I took and was enrolled in a lot of those classes. And I think a lot of it was just like the confidence of a lot of my classes had like guest speakers and they were talking about like, man, I had no idea what I was doing, but I'm here now. And like most of the people, that was the story. It's like the very beginning, you really don't know what you're doing, but yeah you come in with and you know that you're going to work hard and you've got the confidence, like it's something's going to happen. Yeah. So that all the guest speakers were like really influential and helped. But I think especially what stood out was I had three different classes. I had one with Omar, which was the new ventures development, I believe was the name of it. Then I had a leadership class with Flint Harris and then new venture and entrepreneurship management with Mark Zweig. And those three classes were kind of the ones that like the leadership class gave me the confidence um, that I needed for like leading an organization and knowing the strategies on how to lead an organization and especially in a small business context. Um, and then from the like financial and business planning side with Swag and he was like a massive <laughs> proponent of buying businesses. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that whenever he just kept on saying like, you know, people can buy businesses. Right. That's the best way to do it. In my opinion, like he just kept on talking about that. And that was kind of the seed that was really planted around that time. And I took that my spring semester of my senior year. Wow. Okay. So, so it wasn't long after that, that you were able to fulfill your objectives. Yeah. So tell me, I'm curious to know, what was the general sentiment with a lot of your classmates, you know, weighing the pros and cons of like doing a startup, right? Because I remember I've actually come and spoken to a couple of yeah. Mark's Y classes. I've been to Omar's class and, and spoke. And I could remember people coming to me, sharing their ideas and what they were hoping to start up. What would you say would be some of the issues or, or you know, conversations that you heard from your classmates about the pros and cons of, of one versus the other? Startup versus existing. Yeah, I think the idea, like the fun part about the startup is you like to think that there's almost less risk because you can go into a really small startup with almost no cash. And like a lot of these existing businesses you have to pay for, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. the, there's a, some of it, there's a big upfront cost that you've got, which isn't always the case. I mean, sometimes it's just like people just want out and they want you to take over. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's almost kind of what happened in uncle Sam's, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think there's the, like, the sex appeal of having a startup. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, people like everybody thinks of Twitter and Facebook yeah, and, yeah. you know, I mean, it's the allure of I creating know. something from scratch. Yeah. And I get that. Yeah. Uh, I totally get that. But there's, there isn't anything wrong with, you know, buying a, an existing bricks and mortar business mm -hmm. and making it better. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I use, there are a lot of businesses 
that I used here as well as when I was living in Boston. And I, I was like, man, these are all antiquated. They mm-hmm. need to be better. I, I mean, dry cleaners, you know, shoe repair shops. I mean, yeah. just little stuff like that. You know, I even think like here, it's like somebody could make a lot of money having like a really cool dry cleaner slash shoe repair shop yeah. where you can get a lot of that stuff done. People are keeping their clothes longer. They're willing to mend things as opposed to just buy something brand new. And quite frankly, it's better for the environment. Yeah. If you can take care of your clothing and your shoes and keep them for as long as possible. And so that's just actually been an idea in my mind, right? Yeah. I've been like, you know, I, I should do this because like, I can't go anywhere and find a good tailor in mm-hmm. Northwest Arkansas. That's been my one challenge. Yeah. And, you know, when I was living in Boston, there's, you know, there are great tailors all over the place. They're yeah, all great, over downtown. They're great shoe cobblers. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I think there are, that's like a blue ocean, mm-hmm. if you ask me, in terms of opportunities. Yeah. So, so what was it about Uncle Sam's that, you know, for you, at what point did you realize, you know what, I could actually buy this place? Yeah. So it was kind of funny. We had, uh, so in Mark Zweig's class, we did a consulting project mm-hmm. that was kind of our like end of the year final project. And me and a partner um, decided to do one over Uncle Sam's because I'd worked there and kind of knew the ins and outs of it. And like, was it was like my chance to kind of talk with the owner about like, hey, these are the things that I really think that we should change. And so I was like pretty excited about that um, just because there was a lot of things that I wanted to see us do differently. And yeah, so we started that project and just kind of went through it. And I was talking with the owner a lot and we had to do like several interviews to write for the for the project. And I asked him, I was like, hey, so like, what's the long term plan with Uncle Sam's? And he's like, well, you know, I just want to steward it well for now, but like, I don't see myself in it forever. And I was like, that kind of planted the seed of like, oh, he doesn't see himself in it forever. Okay. Like, yeah. he might be willing to sell it at some point. And, you know, we had had a sale during my time working there of Uncle Sam's where it transferred ownership. So I knew that it was like, like the idea of selling the business was not a like foreign thought, even in the Uncle Sam's context. Oh, so that owner had acquired it in the time that you were there in those five yes. years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. He had he cool. had purchased it from his father. So oh, okay. All right. So it was a family based business. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, and it was uh I think the seed was kind of planted there. And then, you know, I was I was fishing with my dad on the White River during the White Bass Run. And we were like just kind of shooting the breeze and fishing. And I was like, Yeah, you know, the owner said that he was like kind of like willing to to sell it and yada, yada, yada. And we were like talking. He's like, you know, if he ever like actually wants to sell it, like you should buy it. And I was like, oh, uh-huh, kind of funny. <laughs> and like, I didn't really think much of it. And then we went to Zweig's class and a couple weeks later, I gave the presentation about the the business and Zweig asked me the question. He's like, so like kind of like baseline, like if you're making like X amount of money and you could purchase it now, like, would you say yes? And I was like, oh, I mean, maybe I think so. <laughs> like, like, I'll think about it. Right. And he's like, he's like, no, like, would you, would you buy it if he was willing to sell? And I yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, I think I would. And he's like, all right, you should go ask him. Like, you should go, you should go ask him if he's, if he wants to sell. Today. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when Mark tells you something like that, he's, he means to do it right now, yeah. not like three weeks from now yeah. or six months. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So did you go ask him right away? So, you know, right, at, right after that. So that presentation was my last in-person class of college. So I took some classes this uh, this fall online, but I went afterwards and like hung out with a couple of my buddies that I'd had throughout college because like all of our last yeah. in-person days. And then the next day I went and asked. Okay, that's cool. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. the yeah. next day I asked him, I was like, hey, so like, like, are you, you really going to sell it? Like you thinking about it? And he's like, yeah, a deal just fell through. There was a guy that was, that was interested. That Were you even aware of that? No, oh, I was not. Wow. So he's okay. like, yeah, a deal just fell through. You want it? And I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So Interesting. yeah, that was, I guess the last week of April, the first week of May. Okay. Some, sometime around there. So, and it took you about, so from April or May of 2022 until mm-hmm. when you closed the deal, I think it was around the 23rd of, of November. Correct. Took about, that's about five months almost. Yeah. So five, a lot of months. that, yeah, a lot of that was, I had already committed to go back to Colorado to guide. So I had like signed a contract and was like, I'm going. So I went to Colorado to guide and through all of that was like writing the business plan and getting financial projections done and like talking with banks and getting all of like kind of the the deal set up, talking with the, my lawyer and getting all of that figured out. 
it definitely would have gone a lot quicker if I was here mm -hmm. because yeah. my time was. Well, you were, you were able to have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. And that's, that's the difference between a startup and existing business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's still humming along, you know, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of protracting out or moving out the date of acquisition. Yeah. So I think that's exciting. Well, for those that are listening, because I know people are probably like, what is Sam's Safari Outfitters? And, and I know it was, and I'll have you kind of tell me what it is, the type of store that it is. But when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of was like an Army Navy surplus store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had gone in a few times when I first moved here back in 2014. And I was like, oh, this is a cool storage. You know, it's got maybe I picked up one or two things. And that was about it. It's based in the Evelyn Hills Mall. So it's right on North College, just below Rick's Bakery, right about a block and a half or two after North Avenue. So yep. the corner of North and College, that's the main intersection. And then you get to the next light and that's where Evelyn Hills um, Plaza is. And you go into the back of Evelyn Hills Plaza yep. and you guys are sitting back there. But tell our audience just a little bit of, of the type of store that Sam's Safari Outfitters is. Yeah. So Uncle Sam's, so we've been around since 1982, started out on Dixon and we were there for a couple of years and then have been in the Evelyn Hills Shopping Center since then. So I guess 30 eight-ish years almost wow. of being in that location. But yeah, it started out as a as an Army Navy surplus store. Um, we still do Army Navy surplus, but over the past decade or two, we've expanded a lot into camping. Kind of what we are is Army Navy footwear, uh, camping, and like outdoor apparel, and then, then backpacking and camping. So like tents, sleeping bags, the like. And kind of our side with that is we're more of like, we want to get people outfitted for the first time that they're going. Um, so like our goal is to kind of lower the bar of entry to get into some of these outdoor activities. So like with our tents, like we've got tents there that are high quality name brand tents, but they're not going to be the giant price tag of like $500, <laughs> $600. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we know that you don't need that for your very first time out. Like we want to make sure that you're set up. And that's like what we have, what I take a lot of pride in is our knowledge of our product and the way that we care for our customers to make sure that they're set up best to go outside. Yeah. I mean, I've, like I said, I, and I've been in the store since you acquired it. And I was, I just, I was, I was kind of remarking to my wife about the clean lines of the store. It's like, you can easily navigate the walkways. And I mean, there's just a lot of, you know, you have a lot of really great products and a lot of high end things. But then, the, you know, I thought the price points were, were quite reasonable um, for somebody that might be trying to outfit themselves for a weekend getaway down the Devil's Den yeah. or, you know, maybe going up somewhere in Southwest Missouri or, you know, just, you know, hanging out, going to Mount Magazine and, mm -hmm. and spending the day and wanting to make sure that you have the right clothing for, for whatever elements you, you encounter. For sure. Yeah. So that's exciting. So how are you I mean, this is almost like the perfect business for you, given the fact that, you know, you are an outdoors guy, you're a guide, you like all those activities. So is there anything that you feel like anything new that you want to bring to Uncle Sam's that, you know, that, that hasn't already existed there? Yeah. Without I think, giving away everything, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that eventually down the line, I'd like to partner with some form of guiding companies. I mean, I... I'm really passionate about the outdoors. I'm passionate. I think whenever you, you boil it down, I'm really passionate about shared experiences and yeah. the shared experiences outside seem to be almost like a crucible of like friendships, relationships, and the ability to like take people out there and kind of lower the bar of, uh, of entry and like making people feel confident outside is just. I love that. That's why I loved guiding was the relationships that I made with people that I guided with or people that I took on trail or people that I took fishing. I think that that is just a, a great way to kind of get away and to like take a breath. And that's like what I would love to do with Uncle Sam's. It's kind of my vision with the apparels that we're outfitting people to be able to get a breath from the rat race that right. they're in. And like, like that's what I think is really fun because it's like we're not there, like we're not a grocery store or like we're not like an office supply store where it's like, oh, I have to go get a manila envelope. It's yeah. like, no, I, I like get to go get this so that I can go this place and like get a breath of fresh air. Yeah, right. And and I mean, as much as the fact that Northwest Arkansas is an outdoor environment type yeah. place, right? Where most of the people that I know, I walk or hike every day. 
I mean, like, like literally every day or if I'm not on my bike mm-hmm. and uh, we have trails. Yeah. I mean, we've got m- small mountains. I mean, we've got a little bit of everything. Yeah. And so what you offer to the general public, you offer a lot of solutions that we collectively here in Northwest Arkansas need on a regular basis. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty exciting. I noticed I had Danny Collins from 37 North Expeditions on the podcast a while back, and he is he has a great program of kind of sharing the beauty of the Ozarks with people on guided programs. Mm-hmm. And, and I got to get you guys connected yeah. because I think that I could see some, and I'm all, I hate using this word, but I see some real synergy there yeah. between Uncle Sam's and what 37 North Expeditions is doing. And then, of course, I mentioned to you my man, Andrew Gibbs Dabney from mm-hmm. Lives in Designs. I only mention these guys to say that the culture and the environment here of just outdoor activities is strong, Yeah, which is why the Sam Walton College of Business has invested in the GORP program. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you've got these, you have, they're actively recruiting businesses that are tangentially outdoor businesses to come to Northwest Arkansas because this is a fertile area to start a business or to take your existing business and yeah. really grow it. Yeah. Right. So just like what you're doing with Uncle Sam's, there are a lot of businesses that are coming here. How do you think that's going to play into your ecosystem as you continue to grow this store? Yeah. I mean, I think that like the amount that the cities up here, the businesses up here are investing in the outdoors. I mean, whether that's like the Waltons investing in a, the Whitewater Park over in like far Western Arkansas and Eastern Oklahoma, like that's big. And like all of the the new trails for biking and hiking and all of that, I think all of that just brings more people into the space that I'm passionate about and I love. And I think that all of that is for the greater good of everyone here. I mean, yeah. going out and hiking just brings a smile and like that breath of fresh air. So I think like with that ecosystem, it just brings it more on the forefront of everyone's mind that like, oh, I want to go out to Devil's Den. And like all of that is for the good of is Uncle Sam's, but also just as Northwest Arkansas as a whole, I think. So I think as far as like the ecosystem, I mean, as we currently sit, I think we have a great relationship with all of the other outdoor companies up here. And I don't see why that would change. So yeah, I don't either. I mean, again, like I said, people are really open to collaboration. Yeah. People are open to helping each other out. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of real opportunities for you. Now I'm curious, are you guys going to maybe add or do you already have products and equipment for biking or at all or so we carry like some some like biking backpacks from mm-hmm. like our, our backpacking companies but as far as like bikes themselves that's not really my expertise i wish sure. that it was yeah because um, yeah. the biking up here is awesome it is, it um, is. but I don't, I don't necessarily foresee us kind of going towards that biking route just because I don't know a ton about it and yeah, no, a lot I of the understand. other people don't know. But, well, I think it's important for people to understand that if they want to go up to like Cotter and fly fish or if they want to go float the buffalo or if they want to go hiking uh, in Hobbs State Park, you probably have a lot of the tools and materials and clothing necessary to be able to do that. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I think that we carry a lot of like our specialty is like camping and backpacking and hiking and like we carry a lot of other outdoor product adjacent things. So yeah. like we carry fly fishing adjacent products, <laughs> like some of like the like fanny packs that we that you could use for fly fishing or like like we got dry bags for floating and like cam straps if you want to do it on a raft. Yeah. And like like we've got backpacks for bikes and like we've got all the socks that you need like for all of the activities. <laughs> like like all those things are yeah, like your sock adjacent. game is really good. And yeah. actually I love I mean you have some really cool looking socks. And, Thank you. and I mean that that is um that's always a benefit. And I think socks are one of those things that you don't have to spend a lot of money on them, but it can certainly separate you out from the masses if yeah. you have some really cool, funky looking socks yeah. on. So, well, listen, I'll be, before we land this plane, there are a couple of things I wanted to bring up to you. So you said earlier that one of the things that you didn't realize was how potentially easier it was to buy an existing business because you alluded to it, but the fact that technically a seller could finance that for mm-hmm. you as opposed to you having to go and get a business loan. Yeah. And that's a real possibility. What was that whole, what did your whole understanding of seller finance come to be as you looked at this potential acquisition? Yeah. I mean, I think that like, I mean, especially with the interest rates as they were, like it was, <laughs> it was a little bit scary to look at that and like look at a, at an amortization table and be like, oh my gosh, this is what, <laughs> is this really what I'm supposed to be paying? So yeah. Yeah, I think that like people that 
Like if you've got a willing seller um, and someone that wants out, like they want to work with you. And I think especially with like the the seller was passionate about Uncle Sam's and like their sellers that are passionate about their small businesses and they want it to be in the best hands. And I think that if you prove that, they want to work with you and they want to steward the business well. And whether that looks like seller financing or kind of a certain like transitionary period figured out, like all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's important for people listening to this podcast to hear very clearly. And I just want to repeat that seller financing, just like in in buying a, a piece of real estate, yeah, you know, there are a lot of people that own their home free and clear. Maybe they don't necessarily need all the cash right up front. Maybe they're they would rather have just kind of an annuitized flow of cash as yeah. opposed to one lump sum. They still have a stake in the game, if mm-hmm. you will. So people can sell you a home and seller finance it if they own it outright, just like a person can sell you a business and seller finance it if they own it outright. Yeah. So this was a situation where this is, was one generation of a family sold it to another generation, and now they are selling it to a brand new you know, group. And yeah. so these opportunities exist all the time. Yeah. And I guarantee anybody listening to this, that there are probably businesses that you frequent where if you just scratch the surface a little bit, mm-hmm. you might find a similar situation that just similar to what Justin found at Uncle Sam's. Would you agree to that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's what your some of your findings were when you did the work that you did in, in uh, Mark Zweig's class. Yeah. I mean, it, it took about three questions before I re- <laughs> like he was like, yeah, no, I don't think I want to do this forever. And it just was like, oh, he, he could want to sell. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, right. I mean, it's I think you scratch a surface with a lot of these people, especially like what you were saying with a lot of the small businesses owned by people over 60, like Mm -hmm. especially up here, like people over 60, they want to go to Beaver Lake. They don't want to be stuck behind their, like stuck at their (laughs) small business. Yeah. 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 Speaking of which, and here's some key takeaways to think about 31.7, this is as of 2020, 31.7 million small businesses in the U.S. accounting for 99.9% of all the U.S. businesses. That's according to the U.S. Small Business Administration. Now, get this, more than half of small business owners are 55 and over. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've met some of these people that that are right here in Northwest Arkansas. So, and then, you know, 9.1% of small business owners are veterans. And then one of the most common reasons people start their own business is to be their own boss, of course. And 66% of those surveyed stated that this is why they open their small business. And so, you know, there are a lot of opportunities out there for you to get your feet wet with a business and buying an existing business may be better than you starting something from scratch. Yeah. Because yeah. Lord knows, I know that. I mean, with even with I Am Northwest Arkansas, what, what started out as a passion project, me, I, mean, I just love podcasting. I can yeah. do this all day long, has ultimately turned into a business. It is now a business, mm-hmm. but it took three and a half years for yeah. me to get here. You- on November 23rd, acquired Uncle Sam's. And the next day you were, well, that day you were in business basically. Yeah. yeah. And you're moving forward. Yeah. And that was, that was the really easy part. And I think the part that like took, I mean, it was not saying it wasn't stressful by any means being 23 and buying a business, right. but yes, I think- Please like, repeat that again. You're 23 years of age. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, 23. So, so when people hearing this saying, oh, well, I've got to be a certain age or I've I've had to go out and work in the world for a while. That's not the case. Now, granted, I will say this, that 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 Mark Zweig, I did speak with him about you in advance of this actual podcast. He said there were a couple of things that really stood out about you, which is why he thought you would be successful, is that you were very mature, that you did your homework, and that you, know, you were kind of relentless in terms of your focus on trying to get this done, where you didn't allow a lot of other tangential things yeah. to get the better of you. You honed in on this and saw it through. Mm -hmm. And then the other benefit was that you had five years working there. Yeah. So you knew the place backwards and forwards. You probably knew it better than the person that that owned it. Just a simple fact, because you were in there all the time. And Mm -hmm. there's somebody listening to this right now that is in the same situation that you're in. They've worked at a place for several years, but they just don't have the, they haven't had that encouragement, right? To step out and just, you know, just do your due diligence. What would you say to somebody that maybe hasn't benefited from being at the Walton College of Business? What would you say they should consider doing to maybe see if it's even possible for them to uh, make an acquisition like that? Yeah. I mean, I think asking never hurts. I mean, just asking like either the the owners or just like just asking about even simple things like 
whether that's the the finances involved with the business. I mean, some people kind of like to hold that really close, but some people are like open. And if you ask, you want to know, and it's like, oh, if you can make that work and if you can make like, if you know that the owner wants out or yeah, I think just asking is a big one. I and mean, I think also what really helped me with confidence, not just with the Walton College, but was like I worked with the Arkansas Small Business Development Center and I worked with Startup Junkie and the GORT program. And like uh, there's there's a ton of resources in Fayetteville specifically, but just in Northwest Arkansas as a whole that are there to help. And they are amazing at what they do and really help. Like if I didn't have the Arkansas Small Business Development, like I would not have been able to know at all what to do when I walked into a bank. Like yeah. they helped set me up with getting like loans and line of credit and all that stuff figured out. And like they helped with all of that and they want to help. So I think like even if someone says yes, then you're like, oh, what do I do? It's like <laughs> that, that next Everybody step. wants to help because yeah. they want a client. They exactly. Want a, they want a client, right? I mean, that's what I always say. I mean, our one of our biggest sponsors is Signature Bank. Yeah. And Signature <clears throat> Bank is a community bank. And their primary focus, while they have, they do, you know, personal business, their primary focus is small business, the small yeah. business owner. And I mean, they just, they walk the walk as far as that's concerned. Mm-hmm. And there are other banks in this area that operate that way. I can think of like Legacy and several yeah. others that are just, you know, business focused and they will help you out. Yeah. You know, it's not like people don't, a lot of times people think, oh, I have to know all this stuff in advance and I have to be perfect and you know, everybody's not Steve Jobs. Everybody's yeah. not, you know, it's so it, it's going to require you to to gain some insight and understanding and to put the work in, which mm-hmm. I know you're doing. And therein lies the difference, right? Of yeah. somebody that that is just kind of hoping that things will turn out in their favor and others that go after it. Yeah. You went after it and now look at where you are, mm-hmm. you know, and that's exciting. I was curious, have you heard of this book, Buy Then Build by Walker Diebel? I don't think I have. Okay. This book is something, this is one I'm going to put this on the show notes, but it's called How Acquisition Entrepreneurs Outsmart the Startup Game. And it's uh, it's a really good book. And he really kind of breaks down the insights for you know running a successful company from day one as an acquisition, not a startup. Mm-hmm. So there's a different mindset there. And I think a lot of people, people are doing this all the time. Yeah. There are business brokerages out there mm-hmm. selling businesses every day. Yeah. But if you can find a situation like the one that Justin found, and I'm speaking to everybody listening to this, there are real opportunities for you that you know may go un- unheeded if you don't open your mouth and talk and ask about it. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, what's next for, for you, Justin? I know you've got some personal things happening in the near future, which I'm excited about, but, but what's next for you with regard to Uncle Sam's Safari Outfitters? Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing with Uncle Sam's a lot of it's just getting systems in place that will kind of ease the way that we can run. I think like we've got specifically with with Uncle Sam's like figuring out a better inventory management side of things, sure. just being able to figure out our reordering and and just managing that inventory as a whole. That's like the the number one thing. Up next is kind of not a full like rebrand, but redefining what we do in our marketing side. That's a big step. And yeah, besides that, I think a lot of it's continuing to train our employees and give them the things that they need to succeed. Yeah, those are those are kind of the big ones stepping up forward. So how weird was it for you to now be the manager over or the owner of a company along with employees that used to be your colleagues, your coworkers? Yeah. I mean, they're still your colleagues, right? Yeah. But they were your coworkers mm-hmm. before. Now it's like you're the man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Was that cool or how, how did that work out? I've been really blessed. So, I mean, the, all of the people that I've worked with at Uncle Sam's over the past five years have just been amazing people. And all of them have pretty much rallied around and been really happy. I think that like they felt like like it was a, a breath of fresh air. And sure. like, I think that was really fun. And like I've seen some people that have like left Uncle Sam's for other ventures and like have come back and like, <laughs> like just talked with me and like been like, hey, I'm really excited. And like, this is great. And like, I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel necessarily awkward. It yeah. feels, I think, especially with the role that I had before, it was just kind of like I was already doing some of the ordering and like, sure. like some of that side of, side of things. And it's like, it wasn't much of a big step, right. but I mean, they've all been extremely supportive and we've had, I still get to joke around and that's cool. Talk about Arkansas football and yeah. like all of that while also life still goes on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, I mean, it's just, 
yeah, I mean, the, the difference now is that you carry the checkbook and you yeah. write, you got to write the checks. I do. I write so, the checks. Which is cool. And, and so I think people need to hear that because I would imagine that you've been really good at managing and building relationships. Yeah. And that I think is one of the key ingredients that anybody that's starting, that's buying an existing business needs to be able to grow and cultivate relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without that, you would, because I mean, you, I could see a situation where someone would make an acquisition and then all of a sudden people are like a little soured by it and then, you know, make life hard for you. Yeah. And you don't want that, right? Yeah. But you clearly had good relationships with all your colleagues. And so it probably made the acquisition that much easier. Yeah. And I think, I mean, the, the big one is like, like it wasn't just professional relationships that we had. Like we had personal relationships and like talking about like real things that are going on in each other's lives and being able to talk about that was great. And I think also just like not holding everything super close to your hand. Like I, I've been fairly open with my employees about finances and this about what strategies. I know. This is and, what I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just like being open and honest about all those things. Like if you're, if you really don't know something, so you really don't know it, if you really do. And like, you don't, there's no reason why you shouldn't be telling it outside of you just want to be selfish. Like, yeah. like just tell them. Like, yeah. And so like, like I'm going with open book management and like talking with them about our finances. Cause like a lot of them wanted to know that and like, they weren't really in the loop on that. And it's sure. like, yeah, like I'd love to let you guys know, like, I'd love to talk about where we are and like how we can get better as a team instead of how can I get the most out of you and not give you anything. It's like, no, well, we want to work together as a collective and reach our goals. You and sound like when I hear you say open book management, I'm like, well, I know where he got that idea yes. from. So, and that's funny because I worked with Mark for a number of years and, and he walked the walk. And that was the one thing that for me, when I joined the company, when we first met back in 97, you know, he was practicing open book management and I was, that, that was foreign to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, these guys are sharing everything. Maybe they're sharing too much, but we were super successful. Yeah. Inc. 500. I mean, there were, there was a reason why we were so successful was because everybody was on the same page. Yeah. And I believe when you operate from that vantage point and you don't hold a lot of secrets or hold all your information close to the vest, you find that everybody wants to be in one accord and in yeah. alignment. And so I think that's, that's important. So, yeah. well, man, I wish you nothing but success. If, if people want to connect with you or just have a chat with you because maybe they're in the same situation that you were in back in April of 2022, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah. I mean, well, I'm at the store pretty much all the time. So if you stop in and ask for Justin, you can, you can chat with me. I'm free as long as I'm not helping someone size shoes or <laughs> size a backpack, then right, I'm, right. I'm pretty free. So uh, yeah, if you just stop in the store, um, you can reach us at Uncle Sam Safari on Instagram. Yeah. Um, our email is Uncle Sam Safari at gmail.com. And then if you want to personally reach me, you can reach me with like my Instagram's just Justin Macedo. And yeah, we'll put all of that on the show notes and we'll make sure we put your LinkedIn profile because yeah. that might be yeah. a good way for people LinkedIn's to connect with good. you as, as well. And, and uh, is and just out of curiosity, is, is Uncle Sam's Outfitters domain available? Not the ones we currently use. Oh, okay. All right. So it's <laughs> yeah. not, okay. All right, cool. I was just, I was wondering if that was available, but I'm sure you'll figure out some wording to use because yeah. what, what domain do you have? Right we, have we have Uncle Sam's gear. Uncle Sam's gear. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That's our website. So okay. if you check out Uncle Sam's gear or Uncle Sam gear, either one will work. But yeah, uh, maybe eventually you might do Uncle Sam's NWA because you might have multiple locations. So yeah, there's, maybe. There's always that. So. Always that. All right, cool. Cool. Well, Justin Macedo, thank you so much for uh, joining us today on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. We really appreciate you taking time out to kind of share your journey in acquiring Uncle Sam's Safari Outfitters right here in Fayetteville. And we wish you nothing but continued success. And we will check back in with you in a while just to see how things are going and, and maybe get a follow-up just to yeah. see how, how things are doing and maybe, you know, what, what new thing that you're working on. So, yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Remember, you can check out our podcast every Monday, rain or shine. We always have a new episode covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life. There's two things I would ask you to do for us. One is follow us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find our podcast there. You can even ask Alexa to play the latest episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, and she will oblige you. And then finally, if you get a chance and you are so inclined, we would love a, a rating and review of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. We're getting so much great feedback from you, the listener. And so we would love for you just to take a few minutes out of your day to give us a rating or review. 
primarily on Apple Podcasts, but also on Spotify or on any platform that you listen to the podcast. We'd love to get that feedback as we continue to improve. There's so many great things happening in 2023 and beyond. And so we're excited to have you here as a listener. Tribe, I am Northwest Arkansas is growing on a daily basis. And we're doing that because of you. And the last thing I will say is get on our newsletter. If you aren't already subscribed, you need to get subscribed. I'm Randy Wilburn, the host of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. We will talk with you next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.